Hello there guys and welcome to week 10. Week 10 of our series, Our Reason for Hope. This is going to be the final week of teaching. Next week I'm going to do a bit of an overview. Uh, but this week I've got an amazing uh, pleasure to be interviewing my brother, socially distanced interview from my front room. Uh, and it's going to be looking at the topic of God is in control. What does it mean and, and why does it give us hope that God is in control? Of our lives and the reality is for so many of us we are sort of desperately trying to get through life so many of us will have great plans great desires to to see something happen with our lives to go a certain way whether it's a, a, a job or a family desire or anything like that and so actually ultimately the idea that God being in control could cause us anxiety it could give us the opposite of hope but I believe that actually God being in control is such an incredible reason that we can have hope. So so why? Why does it give us hope, the fact that God is in control? Well, well here's number one, the, the reality of being in control, of having to create um, the right direction and get things to where you want to go, bring us such stress, they bring us such pressure that we put on ourselves and in fact that others might put on us. But when we are not in control and when God is in control, we can let go of the pressure that we put ourselves under to get somewhere or to be something. Now, I need to say that God does ask us to work as if we are working for him, give everything our best, but ultimately, we know that God is in control. The Bible describes him as the Alpha and the Omega. They are, they are the Greek words for the beginning and the end. He knows where we're going, and we can have faith that God has a great plan for our lives. Jeremiah 29, verse 11. It's a famous verse that you may have heard before. It says this, Jeremiah declares this, for I know the, sorry, the God declares this, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Now, God here isn't saying everything's going to be fine and dandy, you're going to be skipping through a, 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 a I was going to say rose bush then, but that would be very painful, skipping through a sort of field of wild flowers. That's not what life is going to be. Bad things still happen. But we know that God will turn the bad into the good if we let him. A good friend of mine says that God never wastes a hurt. And it's so true, no matter what you have gone through, no matter what you are going to go through, the mess that we create around us, the mess that we create by actually trying to take control, God is able to turn it for good. Romans 8.28 says this, And we know that God, causes everything to work together for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose for them. You know, we have to be chasing after God. You know, if you're chasing after your own desires, ultimately you'll be running away from the desire that God has for you. But we know that God causes everything to work together for good, not not as I intended, not as we love or desire, but for the good, the, the true good of those who are called, called according to to his purpose. Another reason is that when God is in control of our lives, we have faith and we see him move in his provision and his care for us. He makes the best out of the mess we create. There's an amazing story in Genesis. It comes to the end of the line of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob and Jacob's brothers. They send him away. They tell their father they, they, uh, that, they, that he died accidentally. All these terrible things happen and uh, uh, Jacob and his son eventually go to Joseph and his Joseph, sorry, and his 12, um, 11 brothers. They send him away. He, they believe he's murdered. All the father does. And basically he ends up in Egypt and he goes through until he's actually the advisor to the Pharaoh in Egypt. God just creates an amazing thing. And then there's a famine where his brothers are and his brothers come to uh, Egypt to try and receive help. And who is it that serves them? It's their own brother, Joseph. Uh, and the verse in Genesis 50 says this, Joseph says this, you intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. So guys, the question we should ask is not, is God in control? But because God is in control, how does he want to use what I'm going through to change things around me, to bring hope and life to others? Now, I don't believe that God uh, creates all the evil things in this world. The Bible tells us that every good and perfect gift comes from God. And he tells us that we have an enemy that comes to steal, kill and destroy. But I do believe that God can use the mess for our 
good. He can use it to to heal other people around us, to bring good to others around us. And if we're willing to let God move in our mess, move in our pain and our suffering, then he can do exceptional, incredible things and bring good, just like he promises to bring. So now we're going to head into the interview with my brother as he talks a little bit about how he's experienced this in his life. So here we are, guys, at our very first in-person interview. Obviously, everything's been done over Skype. The person to my right is obviously my twin brother, Luke. Uh, some of you may know him, some of you may not. But Luke, obviously, uh, in this teaching series, I've been looking at reasons that the Christian gospel gives us hope. Um, this week, we've been looking at the fact that God is in control and how that gives us hope. And obviously, I know a bit of your story, but I'd love you to share about your story and how you've experienced that in your life. Sure. Um, so I was out in America, in Ohio, working, uh, doing some Christian ministry, ministry with football, which is what I was educated in. Um, and so obviously having those, those two things combined in what I was doing made it feel like um, that was where God had me. And, God dis- and I kind of maybe placed a little bit of that on God and said that this is God's plan. And I decided, you know what, I'm probably going to live out here, work out here, build a life out in America. Uh, and then a couple of years ago, 2017, I came back to get a pretty routine visa um, kind of update um, and ended up getting that denied. So I was kind of back here, um, not doing a job. I ended up um, working as a cleaner. Um, so kind of going from this place of, of doing what I was passionate about uh, and doing ministry to coming back here to be a cleaner, I, I kind of was left in a place of of doubt and questioning and um, really having questions to God saying what's going on you know I had no no real idea um, and and I mean now two two and a half years later I'm now uh, married buying my first house um, have a great job um, and you know I think sometimes we we kind of either feel like we might be in control or we might even think we know what God's plan is because it's what really we want. Yeah. Um, but now looking back, I can see so clearly that God was in control, that even in the really tough moments, the tough moments, tough moments where honestly I doubted God, I questioned God, um, I, had a, I had a really trouble, troubled time in my relationship with God and understanding why. Um, but now there is no question, um, you know, I could have had any job, any opportunity, anything in America, and it would not have matched up to what God has blessed me with here and given me here. And actually, it's not just that, you know, oh, he gave me a different plan. It was that he had a far greater, far better plan all along. Mm. And uh, I think for me, in many times in my life, I've been able to look back and realise that God was in control. And in the moment, you have no idea, no plans, no no answers to any questions. But when you look back... It, for so many times in my life, I've could look back and gone, oh, that's what you were doing. Yeah. It's so clear. Yeah. And um, yeah, that's how kind of I know. Even, and, you know, I may have troubles again in my life. I may have questions, yeah. but I know that God will always be in control. Yeah, that's awesome. Like, I remember being there and hearing the news and, you know, getting the phone call from my mum saying, Luke's visa has been denied. And I mean, you had all your clothes were in America. Yeah. Your Xbox was in America. Everything was in America because you assumed you'd be back for two weeks and go again. Yeah. I came back with, with one hand luggage full. I think I had a couple of jumpers and a couple of pair of trousers. That was yeah. it. That was crazy. And so, and so then he was left and stuck and you've had suitcases sent back from America and stuff. So it's been a crazy time for you. And I, I remember even me thinking, well, okay, God, what are you doing? Because he's serving you and, and, and so what's going on? So I guess a, an interesting question is either going forward when you experience like that again, or for people who are watching who might be in the midst of a situation where it doesn't look like God's in control, mm. like, how could you, if you were to live that time again, have that trust in God, what would you maybe put in place, or what would you encourage people with if they're in a similar place where it looks like it's all going to pop? Mm. I think one important thing which actually which helped me um, was that actually I felt comfortable questioning God. I think sometimes yeah. we look at God and we say, he knows what he's doing, he's almighty, he's majestic, he, he's up there, and so he can't be questioned. And it's not that I was saying, God, you're wrong, but I was, you know, I came with him openly and honestly, and I think that actually helped my emotional state and my emotional relationship with God. Um, but also, um, you know, thinking back to the times when it happened before, it happened with my decision of where to go to university, with those things, you know, there will be times in, there was times in my life and there will be times in your life if you're going through this that actually that God has done this before and he has been in control and, and, it, and it has worked out. And so I would encourage 
you know, people know, oh, what I would do would be to, con to continue to focus on those things, uh, remember those things, and continue to pray. It was really difficult to pray. I won't say I was perfect. I know I, I struggled. I stopped at times. I didn't read my Bible, but actually continuing to pray and persevere with it and remembering the times when he had, you know, God's never failed me and he never will. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, that's what I'd, I'd advise. That's awesome, man. Thank you so much uh, for doing this socially, slightly socially distanced interview. Uh, stay away. Uh, so, yeah, guys, so what a great encouragement about all that God will do if we're willing to trust in him. And yes, right now, it might look like you're in a place where God isn't in control and everything's falling apart. Mm -hmm. But I promise you that you can look back in your past and see moments where he was faithful. Mm -hmm. And that can give you hope that what he's doing in the present and how he looks forward into your future he is in control and he is doing things that will turn you, what your situation in right now for good. Amazing. So there we are. There is uh, the interview with Luke. It was a fantastic time to, ch to chat with him and his story. You know, I've lived through a, a lot of it. And so uh, it just such a truth about the fact that, you know, even when we feel like we know where God's taking us, actually God is still in control and he might take you left. He might take you right. But we can have faith and trust that what he plans is good and that he is in control. I love, just a final thought, I love the story and, and the stories of, of Paul, the Apostle Paul, because when he was um, sharing all the good news about Jesus, he had terrible things happen to him. He faced imprisonment. He was chased out of cities, people trying to kill him and imprison him. He was in shipwrecks and still he trusted in Jesus. And he said, you know what, God, you are in control. I can trust in you. I will worship you. I will continue to spread your good news. And it comes to the final day where I come to meet with you, then that's fine. I will continue to do all that you've called me to be and trust that you are in control. And so, guys, that message, our week 10 message is for you. That we can have faith even when the mess of life catches up with us because ultimately we know that God is in control and he will bring it to good and to his plans that he planned before the beginning of the world. And so that is the reason, guys, that God being in control gives us hope. Thank you.